been a number of patients who'd come up to us um, uh, and had been referred at clinic and having discussed with the clinical team, um, they had said to us, look, you know, there are these patients that don't appear to be benefiting very much from mental replacement therapy. They're, they're progressing uh, much more rapidly clinically than we think they should be doing so. Their biomarkers appear to be raised as well and elevated. And they don't appear to be benefiting from this treatment. So we developed a set of, of, uh, uh, of assays which allowed us to measure the level of total antibodies and also to look at the functional effect of antibodies by, by seeing how, how these antibodies blocked the ability of um, enzyme to actually function, so it's catalytic activity, and also how much these enzymes block the ability of cells to take up the enzyme. And what we found was quite startling, and that is that in patients who've never seen um, foreign protein before at all, so these are the most severe form Hurler disease, they have no protein produced whatsoever. So to them, this protein is viewed as a foreign, um, uh, a foreign object coming into the body. And as a result, you, you would expect these patients to raise antibody responses, which they do. Many of them also raised inhibitory antibody responses, but after a bone marrow transplant, most of these antibodies are actually actually go away, and we think that bone marrow transplant works as a way of tolerizing the body to this new protein. In Hela-Shea patients, so these are a more attenuated form of Hela disease, what we found was that, um, to our surprise, about 75% of these patients were still raising um, um, any kind of antibody to the disease, uh, sorry, to the uh, enzyme replacement. Um, but we were also surprised to learn that about a third of these patients were actually raising antibodies against uh, inhibitory antibodies, which were blocking the uptake, uh, the ability of cells to take this enzyme up. Um, and we think that this could have very really significant consequences for um, enzyme replacement therapy in patients. So our recommendations for uh, Hurler disease and probably for enzyme replacement therapy in most of the other lysosomal diseases is that we need to be monitoring these patients for um, both total um, IgG antibodies and for functionally inhibitory antibodies as well. And it shouldn't just be done once at the beginning of therapy, it should be done really throughout the period of, uh, that, the, that the patient is receiving therapy. And I think in cases where patients have elevated biomarkers, um, in cases where, where we can show that they have functional inhibitory antibodies and that they don't appear to be getting clinical benefit, then the, in these cases, patients should be considered for alternative treatments. Um, in the case of MPS1 HERLA, an alternative treatment might be uh, a bone marrow transplant. Um, so the, those would be our recommendations, and obviously they have to be made in the context of, a, of, a, of the clinical team and the clinical care team for the patient. Um, but we think that this is an extra tool that really should be applied in these cases.